Good morning to you. Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Saturday, August 28th, 2021. I am in Gulfport, Mississippi, getting ready for Hurricane Ida myself. We have a lot to talk about today to get you ready to arm you with the best information that I can give you as to what to expect, how to prepare, where to find information, and how we're going to be covering this and how what I do as part of my job here to help you, how it can help you out, your friends, your family that might be down here. We have a very unique way of covering these systems, especially when they are going to be as potentially severe as we're seeing here with Hurricane Ida. So let's get on with the program, as they say. We will start off with a satellite image, actually a series of them. We call that a satellite animation, courtesy of our friends at Tropical Tidbits. This is Nora in the Eastern Pacific. This is going to bring very heavy rain and hurricane conditions, possibly for parts of southwest Mexico. And then it's going to track up into the Gulf of California, where it could deliver a lot of moisture to the desert southwest. That is something to keep an eye on if you have interest in that region, maybe some flash flooding uh, over the next several days along this entire area. So Nora, something to watch for sure. We have a new depression, number 10, sitting out here. No worries at all. This is going to head up into the north, to the north, into the open Atlantic and not be a problem. Uh, this might try to develop as well, but we're pretty good in terms of any other impacts coming from the east. All of this area is pretty much closed for business in terms of anything coming at us from the east towards the west. Not going to happen anytime soon. The big story right now, of course, is down here in the Gulf, and that is Hurricane Ida. So let's take a look at a close-up satellite animation. This is the visible animation from when it was dark until just recently, once the sun has come up. This is courtesy of weathernerds.org, another really great website for customized satellite views and modeling and all sorts of other great stuff. And you can see what's been happening here. Look at that one little area of lightning in the overnight hours right there. And it kind of rotates its way around. That's lightning around the core. Uh, and this particular satellite that we use, the GOES-16, shows us lots of different things. But one of them is the lightning flash count. And why is that important? Well, when we see a lot of lightning around the core, that indicates a tremendous amount of upward motion there very deep thunderstorms are what we call convection and you get a lot of ice crystals forming because of that deep thunderstorm activity and the ice crystals are what give us the lightning long story as to why that is but trust me when you see the lightning in the core like that that's in, uh, indicative of a strengthening system it's really starting to release that latent heat and get its act together uh, some of the recent recon information indicating a little over 20 mile wide eye and it's it was open on one end it's trying to get organized it's no longer elliptical it's more round in its shape ida is on its way and has plenty of time as it moves across the gulf of mexico here and eventually towards southeast louisiana for a landfall for the center to become very very strong probably reaching category four and that's just the Saffir Simpson scale. And we're going to talk about what that means. Like, well, what do you mean it's just? I will explain. So let's look at the track map real quick of our three different systems here in the Western Hemisphere. There's Nora again with its impacts. Don't want to ignore this. I know Ida's the big story, and that is what most people are focused on. But Nora, a Category 1 hurricane headed up into the Gulf of California. Much needed moisture for this area of the Southwest, potentially, and Northwest Mexico, but it could come at the... Uh, with the risk of some pretty significant flooding. Again, the new depression number 10 out here forecast to become a tropical storm briefly, uh, but it's of no consequence to anyone except shipping interest. So let's zoom in here to Ida and take a look at the forecast here over the next uh, couple of days as it makes its way towards the Louisiana coastline. Now again, when we say it, it makes its way to the Louisiana coastline. That is the center. That's what we're tracking on any tracking map that you have out there. This is our interactive map off of the Hurricane Track Insider site. Whether you have an app, and there's a lot of apps out there from small vendors to big commercial apps. Anyway, they all do the same thing. They're going to track that center. That's what that is. That's the eye of the core. It tells you nothing, just reminding you of the effects and how far out those extend from the center. 
So we're going to talk about that as we go forward here. But it's supposed to strengthen steadily, moving over some very high ocean heat content. That's just very warm water. That's also That warm water is also very deep. The warmness extends deep down into the Gulf, and that provides extra energy for this. And it should strengthen all the way to landfall. Some of these will weaken right before landfall. But some of them also strengthen, and it looks like Ida could be one where it is strengthening all the way up to the point of landfall. Now, as we zoom in more here, uh, let's go to the street level map that we've got in here, the open street map, get an idea of some of the areas that could be impacted. And uh, I'm going to switch this over to the reddish color. So this is the center line where the eye would be, so to speak. But the effects will extend out from the center. So eastern Mississippi across the rest of the Mississippi coastline, all of southeast Louisiana, anywhere on the right-hand side of the track is where you're going to have the most significant storm surge. And the surge will impact all the way over to probably the beaches of Pensacola. Why? Because there's onshore flow all across this area, piling up the water in the Mississippi Sound, especially over in this corner and you know you have the waveland bay st louis area and they need to get over into southeast extreme southeast louisiana and you know you know the drill the water just gets piled in there very efficiently because of the shape of the coastline down the coast right at the immediate interface of the gulf marsh coastal area grand isle included you're going to have a significant storm surge pushed potentially by the core itself. So the broad wind field is going to kind of push the water in like, you know, a large snow plow over a large area. But then right near that core, this is so important, if it is intact, which it'll probably be, and you'll see it on radar, it'll look like this donut. Right in that core is where the strongest winds will be, and that'll drive a fast-moving, extremely just nightmarish surge coming in as high as 15 feet, maybe even higher than that. And it'll be accompanied by large waves, several feet uh, tall, just bulldozing anything in its path. All right, we've got a talk graphic here. This is nothing to mess around with. Uh, Going to hype it up? You bet, because we've got to motivate people to, to get out and not second guess this. So the surge, a very, very big problem from the coast of Mississippi all around Louisiana here to the right side of where Ida makes landfall. Then you've got the wind. That core is obviously where the highest winds will be, but you'll have a large wind field, so there could be power outages, potentially if you get a heavy band from Mississippi through the greater New Orleans area, areas like Thibodeau, Homa, over to Morgan City, all the way up to Gonzales, Baton Rouge, Hammond, Covington, the I-10 corridor through here. And I want to mention something else. Uh, and I want to appeal that you like listen to the sound, the words coming out of my mouth. Truckers, if you know people in the trucking business and they are going to go across I-10, especially because that's a major corridor, when this is coming in, please let them know to avoid traveling through. I know they may have a deadline, they may have the boss riding them, to get to where they need to go in a hurry. Look, I get it. They have work to do. But this kind of hurricane coming across that area is going to blow some trucks over if they are not careful. They've got to stop. We saw it during Zeta, when Hurricane Zeta made landfall. We saw the aftermath. I saw it with my own two eyes. Truckers that were blown over. This is going to be stronger. So if you know people in the trucking industry, people in RVs, anybody traveling, but especially our Truckers, we need you, okay? We need you alive. We need your goods and services for the supply chains. With everything else that's going on, please, please, if you're traveling along this route through here, especially into Mississippi, the I-10 corridor, do not do so as this is coming ashore. Very, very important because the wind is going to be very significant because this is not going to be falling apart more than likely once it's making landfall, it's going to continue to try to strengthen because it's got all of this sort of marshy area. You know, it's called the sportsman's paradise down here for a reason. Water temperatures through here are close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go and rapidly intensify all the way to landfall. 
So people in Baton Rouge, prepare for a significant hurricane impact here. Areas east of there, uh, I mean, it, it's just, this is it. This is the one where you go, that's the big one. This has the, the potential to be that. And then it's not going to stop there. As it moves inland, the effects go with it. Flash flooding, just river flooding, you name it, all the way up into the interior portions of the Mississippi Valley. Hurricanes don't stop with their impacts. There's no magic wall down here you know, that's set up that, oh, once it hits that wall, everything beyond that's over. Far from it. So let me give you a couple of hints on how to find out exactly what to expect. Go to the National Hurricane Center homepage, nhc.noaa.gov. Look right here at the top part and where it says Local Info on Ida. Lake Charles, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mobile, Pensacola, you get the idea. These are the areas, the weather forecast offices, the WFOs, that are issuing local statements about Ida. As an example, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, we can look and see what they are expecting. The impacts, threats and impacts as an example. Look at this. This is so helpful. Radar, all these different links in here. Um, preparedness, the satellite, it's all right here. So use that to your advantage. Um, there are also what we call the hurricane uh, local statements. I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, but the Hurricane Center homepage, very helpful. These infographics, peak surge. We're talking about this, 10 to 15 feet. I don't know of anybody that's 10 or 15 feet tall. Uh, you got to get out 7 to 11 feet between mouth of the Mississippi over to potentially Ocean Springs. And then, very importantly, our friends in Mandeville, Louisiana, right over here, four to seven feet of Lake Pontchartrain area, mainly coming in from the south. So surge is a big problem here. You have to evacuate. You can't stay at those camps and just, eh, I'm going to see what happens. I don't really think this is going to happen. Well, it's going to happen, and you need to be getting out of there. Um, exactly how this all ends up, we don't know that it's going to be precisely 15 feet. We could have higher. It is dependent, the surge is dependent entirely on the angle of attack and exactly where that onshore flow sets up. But as a general sense here, this is what we're looking at. 10 to 15 feet across a big area from Morgan City over to the mouth of the Mississippi. That's that right hand side, I use my right hand, of the track. All right, so anything on the east side of the track, those locations should receive the worst of the surge. Let's not forget the rainfall. Could be very, very heavy in the red areas, the pink areas, anywhere from 10 to 20 inches. And then the orange is 6 to 10, and that spreads all the way up into portions of Tennessee. So the rainfall, a big, big, big problem as well. That'll make travel difficult. You've had a lot of rain earlier this summer, a lot of rain in parts of Gulfport just yesterday. So the rainfall is something to be very concerned about with flooding and the recovery effort. It's going to hamper things. Uh, all of these graphics available on the National Hurricane Center homepage. If you just want to break it down, the key messages are here. Very helpful as well. When to expect the time of uh, winds to arrive, the earliest reasonable arrival time. Tomorrow by 8 a.m., it is reasonable to expect that most of southeast Louisiana and Mississippi, the entire Mississippi coast, reasonable to assume that by 8 a.m. tomorrow, tropical storm force winds will be here. All right, so this is the tool kit that you can use to see what's happening and what to expect. Uh, Ida sitting over here going to cross this extremely high octane area. I mean, it's just right out of a textbook this bullseye of upper ocean heat content almost off the chart. It's just very warm. It's this warm eddy, as we call it. So it's basically this eddy of swirling water. It is. It's like a big turning area of water, like a gyre. And so it's not just sitting there. It's not stagnant so that the hurricane comes along and mixes it up. Like you take a cup of coffee and you stir it up and kind of cool it off a little bit. Not happening here. Ida's going to come over and just churn up more warm water. That is what those white colors mean, is there's very high ocean heat content. There's a whole physics side to it, thermodynamics and other stuff that we're not going to get into, 
because we don't have time. But just trust me, that is very, very warm water. And the upper ocean heat content, even though it's lower, is still formidable. And the actual skin of the ocean, the surface water, very warm, like I said, close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So Ida does not have much of a chance to weaken once it starts that rapid intensification process. Looking at the modeling real quick, it's pretty much a shoe-in as to what is going to happen. This is the 6Z GFS. We move this along. Ida comes in in the overnight hours tonight, early tomorrow. And you might look at the pressures on here and go, well, 959, 956. Eh, it might be a Cat 3. I'm not going to worry about that. That's not too, I mean, come on. Intensity forecasting by the global models, forget about it. We don't know. Just it is a well-organized, strong hurricane, and you need to be thinking that. Don't think, let me wait and see if it makes it to Cat 4. All right, anyway, enough of that. Let's just get on with it. Uh, just, just some stubborn folks. I get it. History, you don't believe the science, etc. You know, you've been burned before. This could be the one time and it costs you your life. So don't look at the pressure on here. Let's look at the where it's supposed to make landfall and how large that rain area is. So it goes into southeast Louisiana to central Louisiana, somewhere near Morgan City, with the core. But then the areas east and south of there, Grand Isle, New Orleans, right up here, 90 degrees, 30 degrees is the lat long area, or long lat, whatever, eastern Mississippi, all of that onshore flow, piling up the surge to the east of that center, and then it goes inland, very well organized, still with Baton Rouge potentially in the right front quadrant, all the way up into northeast Louisiana there, following the Mississippi River, a major disaster in the making, power outages. I mean, this is going to be a big, big story as it unfolds. Looking at the H-Wharf, this is the hurricane weather research forecast model designed specifically for hurricanes. This is what the model is for. It gives us a better idea of intensity. So this is a little bit more reasonable if you want to, well, let me see how strong it's going to be. Well, here you go. This deepens down to the upper 950s, 955, 52, 51, 947, as it heads just to the west and south of Grand Isle. Grand Isle is right there, and there's the center, the eye, if you will, the core around it, very symmetrical in the modeling. 944, yeah, that's a solid category. Four makes landfall west of uh, Grand Isle, headed towards the vicinity of Morgan City with the eye potentially way over on the eastern side of Vermilion Bay, Sippermore Point and vicinity right over here. So that would be an offshore flow. Could blow Vermilion Bay out. That could be interesting to see for people that are over there. Uh, and if you're worried in southwest Louisiana, Cameron, Lake Charles and vicinity, Creole, you got away, uh, got lucky on this one and you needed it after last year. Even the areas where Delta went in, Hurricane Delta last year, it looks really good for you guys. Unfortunately, for your brothers and sisters to the east, not so much. All these different bands and cells that come in, they could have tornadoes, all this onshore flow, piling up the water. You say, well, look, the center's going in over here. What do I got to worry about in New Orleans or Mandeville or Gulfport or Waveland? Well, you got to worry about the fact that this is a big wind machine and you live along a very shallow, surge-prone area of the coastline. Geography, it's a beautiful part of the country until you get hurricanes, right? Then it moves inland, like I was showing you on the GFS, very similar with hurricane conditions possible way, all, uh, way on up into interior portions of Louisiana and Mississippi. By the way, this is all available free of charge to look at this at uh, tropicaltidbits.com. You just click on... The, uh, the models, you click on Hurricane Model, H Wharf, Ida, and boom, there you are, just to let you know. All right, so I will be covering this from our perspective of using this remote technology. And the way that you can watch our coverage is through this amazing crowdfunded project. And you do that connecting our Patreon, which is our crowdfunding uh, mechanism. It's a site for crowdfunding stuff that you like to support people that make movies, you know, bloggers, podcasters, whatever, and even some weather uh, folks are on there. I think Levi, Dr. Cowan, is on Patreon. I know weathernerds.org and several other 
storm chasers that you may know. So we use it to connect through HurricaneTrack.com. That's our main website here, been around since 1999. And you go to this little banner right here, that's the Patreon link, and that takes you to our Patreon page. And then you can sign up there and see what's going on with our project. Uh, the public page just gives you an idea. It's 10 bucks. That's it for this incredible project. There's five different levels, but ten dollars for you know to sort of get in the front door, twenty-five and up, depending on what you want to get in return. And this is what we do with it: the Hurricane Track Insider site. All the people that are chatting, they're all right here. The cameras, the tweets, you know, this is it. This is what we do with that crowdfunding. The map that I was telling you about, this is it, and it's interactive. We have our camera systems on here. We've already got two up and running. This is down in Gulfport at the marina. People getting going. If you've known my stuff from the past, you know what we're capable of. This one has a weather sensor with it, as you can see here. Some of them will, some of them won't, uh, but this one does, and that air pressure will be really watching that. This is over in the Waveland area, looking back towards the east. We are going to set up, my team and I, Brent and Matt have come to help me, uh, Gulfport will probably be the farthest east that we go. We're going to set cameras all the way down into Grand Isle, all along the Highway 90 corridor, uh, Homa, down to Dulac, Dulac, however you say it. Some of these camps over here, Baton Rouge, Gonzales. I have, I can't remember, I think I have 14 more. So we have 16 total. We have three weather stations with the actual anemometers on them that we're going to put in that right front quadrant. But listen, this is what we do, and we need your support to make it work. All right, this is my job. I don't, I'm not, I don't work as the manager of you know selling paper somewhere. The Dunder Mifflin ha ha reference. Seriously, this is not my hobby. This is my job, and the old Jerry Maguire help me help you. You want me here, you know. And that line from A Few Good Men. Sorry to be like whatever, but I, I love pop culture. But you get it, you want me here. I got this stuff, you want me to do this. This is how I do it. My team and I need your help. And we're going to set up, you know, we got two now. It's going to be populated with a whole bunch more. And uh, you can access this. We have the digital dashboard where they all show up as well. That's linked, by the way, right off of here. Uh, the interactive tracking map, the live cams, even the different tools. These are all the different um, animations and uh, other things that I use. I made like a little shortcut of them all right here for you but the wall of uh different cameras that we have they're all able to be moused over and then of course the actual digital dashboard this will be populated look at all those squares that our producer mike cornelius has set up they're going to be populated with cameras you go in you make them full screen it's a beautiful thing you have sound yeah this is what we do nobody else on the planet does this like we do not like this so you want to be a part of it help it to grow help the future of it this is how we do it through patreon patreon.com slash hurricane track and there it is right there it's an app as well and a website it's desktop and an app uh, let me bring me back on and let me just show you something that's really neat uh, with that interactive map if you join up and then you're on the Hurricane Track Insider site on your mobile device. You go to that interactive map. I'll show you real quick, and then I'm going to get out of here so that you can uh, see this video. You're on the mobile version, tablet, iPhone, Android, doesn't matter what it is. You go on the interactive map, and right there it says, Pin to Home Screen. See that? I'll highlight it. Pin to Home Screen. So on your mobile device, you can pin that map to your home screen, and it'll look like an app, and it functions very much like an app. See it right there, that little hurricane track icon? It says tracking map. You tap that, and bingo, that map will come up, and let's get the, uh, there it is. It comes up, and you can track all that assets that I showed you right on your phone. And you can do screenshots and send those screenshots to your friends and family. It's similar to an app, and we don't have to worry about downloading something different. Uh, and maintaining an app in the app store. We used to have an app, uh, but it was just too expensive to maintain. And so we do it this way. Uh, so let me get back to my exit screen here. 
All right, so that's the deal. That's what we're doing. That's what you need to know. I gave you some tools. You know, use the weather service sites to know the specifics about evacuation. Don't second guess this. Do what you need to do to save your life. That's the number one goal here. Uh, and then hang in there. Um, that's about you know the best advice I can give. I know this is hard. It's tough. It's stressful. We're here to help. And thanks to your help uh, through the crowdfunding, we can do that. I will be posting plenty of stuff on social media. All right, our Twitter at Hurricane Track. That's the logo you look for right there to know that it's us. YouTube, you're watching this on YouTube. We will be live on a public feed later today, and you'll be able to tune in and see what we do there. And uh, we try to give back to the the greater good, contribute to the science with wind data, the surge data that we get from this. It helps local government, local emergency management, the public, and the media. And it's all thanks to your support on your end. So thank you very much for that. All right, I'm done. I am Mark Suddoff, getting ready to head out. Thanks for watching. I'll have more for you from out here along the Central Gulf Coast starting later today.